welcome to RT World in today's video on chest x-ray and radiograph. Today we're going to be doing some interpretations. What? Where, where is my... Hold on. What? Hey! Welcome everyone! Yeah, it looks like I'm back. I, there was a skeleton here, right? It's not me? Okay, I just wanted to make sure. All right guys, so uh, today's video, welcome to RT World once again. Here is a pretty, you know, it's a lot to unpack right here. We're doing chest x-rays and chest radiographs. And if you don't know, I'm letting you know, this is for interpretation for respiratory therapy. And so, you know, in respiratory therapy, we gotta know, chest imaging is crucial in the practice of RT, respiratory therapy. And when we, when we talk about chest x-ray, there's a lot, like you see key terms, there's key markings, there's landmarks, there's a lot of things that we can do to help us interpret our, our chest x-rays. So let's begin. All right, so the most common radiograph projection, this is the way they're shooting the film, of the chest, and this is to evaluate the lungs and the heart, cardiopulmonary, right down our alley. So this would be an AP. This is the most common. The AP stands for anterior posterior. And you know, we look at it here and I'll bring up an image for you guys. So it'd be the standing position shooting midline straight down the center and the back would be against the wall standing. Or the patient or, or, uh, would be shot straight down through the bed, back to the bed, lying down. This is the most common um, projection or image that you would see um, for, again, cardiopulmonary, heart and lungs. All right, so how, how would we perform this? Or when would we perform this? Is there some indications? How do the patients perform this maneuver? Well, let me say, the patient would perform this maneuver and they would take a breath. As they're shooting, they take and hold a <gasps> deep breath, get those lungs expanded, and then if they're on a mechanical ventilator, right, we would, as RTs, a respiratory therapist, we would deliver a, a single breath, a side breath, and we would hold it and they would shoot that image. That would give us a full, nice, clear image, okay? So, let's get into the indications. What are the indications? When do we need to order a chest x-ray or a radiograph, when do we need to perform this on our, on our patients? Because there is some, you know, we just don't do it on everybody, right? You guys need to know that. But here we go. So what are those uh, key or indications that we should um, be in tune to, to know that we need to obtain a chest x-ray? So uh, I thought Egan's did a really good job of uh, putting, you know, the uh, clinical indication. So you'd find this on page 420 in your Egan's 12th edition. And this would tell you an outpatient, you see that right here, an outpatient, you're looking at unexplained dyspnea. We're looking at severe persistent cough. We're looking at hemoptysis. We're looking at fever and sputum production, acute severe and chest pain, positive tuberculosis skin or blood test. Now we're looking at inpatient. This would be right up our alley when we're working in the hospital, acute care. We look at placement of endotracheal tubes. When we place our tubes, we've got to get an x-ray. Placement of pulmonary artery catheters. Placement of central venous pressure catheters. Oh, here it is, a sudden onset of dyspnea or chest pain. We need to order that x-ray elevated or changing in plateau pressures during mechanical ventilation. Our pressures are creeping up, let's see why. Sudden decline in oxygenation. This would be another indication or reason why we would obtain a chest x-ray. So once we get that right, we know indications of when we need to do a chest x-ray, right? We also know that, right, this is a significant change when we put somebody intubate, right, there's some key things that we definitely need to do. And I'm gonna reference that again so you guys know. Um, we're getting that out of Egan's textbook and this is um, uh, edition 12 and this would be um, on page 420. You can see those indications right there. Great, great resource. 
All right, so let's talk about some landmarks. When we bring up our x-rays, and we're going to go through these, right? We're going to interpret them. But let's first go through some of these, um, you know, uh, key markings and landmarks that I have up here, right? And so we look at it. We got the trachea, the mediastinum, the costophrenic angles, the diaphragm, the heart, and the aortic knob. Or we call it a knuckle or a notch, different terms that we do. And then if you see up here, then we got the key terms. We have radiolucid. You need to know what that means. Consolidation, hyperlucency, diffuse. If diffuse, if you see this word, opaque, cardiomegaly. Some of these are not going to be represented on the chest x-ray, but I, I, I need you to know an interpretation could be written. It doesn't have to be visual. So if it's a TMC, or they're asking you in some way, but they're using terminology, this is where the key terms plays a huge factor. If you can catch one of these key terms, they are leading you to a disease pathology or an indication or showing you something that they're directing you to. COPD, ARDS, all sorts of stuff. And we'll cover those a little bit later. So let's get right into it. So let's talk about what these key terms are. This is where you get a notepad and you write these down. Radiolucent. Radiolucent is, is typically used for normal, right? This is radiolucent means transparent. You see through it. It's air. And what does air represent on a chest x-ray? Or what does it show? It's black, right? It's dark. That's normal. So air there, well, the volume or how much, right? But radiolucency, there's normal, right? It's, it's you know, it's there. Consolidation is the next one up here. And we look at consolidation. Consolidation, we're going to see this as white. What would we think about if we saw consolidation or heard that? Or we saw white? We're automatically thinking about what? Pneumonia, pleural effusions, things like that. Then we look at hyperlucency. Hyper meaning more. It's hyper, it's extreme, it's a little bit more, it's more, right? It's hyperlucency, and lucency is seen, see clear. So that's extra air, extra dark. You have any ideas who might be hyperlucent on their chest x-ray? And if you said pneumothorax or COPD, you got that correct. That would have a hyperlucent chest x-ray. All right, the next one that you see is diffuse. If you see something diffused, it's scattered throughout. There's a problem, right? So we're looking spread throughout. What could spread throughout? Well, atelectasis, pneumonias, right? All right, the next one we have up here is opaque. Opaque is white, but this is solid. You can't see through. This is consolidation, bony structures, things like that, going to come very white, you see opaque, and it's not a bony structure, consolidation. The last one here that we have up here is cardiomegaly. And cardiomegaly just sees mega heart, enlarged heart, we have a bigger heart. And that's what we see here. So I highly suggest we know these terms. And if you know those terms, you should be okay, because they won't always show you the image. They might just tell you some words and you should be able to know that or interpret what they're trying to give to you. All right, so let's go to this side, okay? And as we do this, I'm kind of going to bring up, and I'm going to bring this up now, is a normal chest x-ray. And that's what you're going to see over here. And on this normal chest x-ray, you know, I'm going to use the cursor. You guys see the cursor there? So trachea mediastinum. So if you see these little things here going down, this is your trachea and this is your mediastinum midline. So you want to go straight down here, right? Well, why do you want to go midline? Well, you want to see a shift. And we'll talk about that. Because if we shift it away or towards, that's another sign. That's giving us a sign where, where we need to identify something or it's leading us to a interpretation, all right? The next one is crostrophenic angles right here. Crostrophenic angles. These are right here. These are those points on both sides, on the right and left lung, and they come to these points. Well, these could you know, be blunted, 
or if there should be filled in and it goes straight across and it's all wide in here, well, you're thinking what? Plural fusions, consolidation, right? The next thing over here is diaphragm. These are these uh, dome right here. This is your diaphragm right here. This big, they should be dome shaped, a little higher on the right than the left. Okay, you see those domes creating these nice claustrophonic angles because this is a normal x-ray right here. We see our vascular markings all throughout your scattered. This is our heart, which is our next thing on the, on the um, list over here, right? And that's what you see here. This is your heart. And what should the heart be? What, what, how do we know that's the correct, right? Is there a size that we should know? And if you said one half the diameter of the chest, you are correct. This heart, or your heart, should be, on an x-ray, should be one half the diameter of the chest. All right. And the next one here, the aortic knob, or, or, or you know, arch, notch, knuckle. You see it different ways. I call it the knob, and you'll see it come right here. Okay? And I have a better representation of that, and I'll show you. Because... When we look at this, and I'll bring that up, this is the aortic knob. And why you need to know that is because this is ET2 placement, right? And we'll talk about that a little bit more later. But you'll see right under that, you should be able to verify, like right here, you can see that's the bifurcation. That's your carina. That's where the right and left bronchi main stem, right? Right and left main stem break down and you go into all your spiders down here, alveoli. This is all your vascular markings here throughout your lungs. All right, so let's show you what that looks like. All right, so let's bring that up and we have it right here. So if you see this, what is this called again? That's our aortic knob, our arch, or what did I say, knuckle, right? But really, you just wanna find this notch, okay? So it, it drew a nice diagram because we, we already um, called this out. This is your heart right right here and it's what one half the diameter of the chest so ascending so this is coming out and then it comes up and it descends so that notch right there is when this curves around and makes this little notch so now you can kind of see that's your aorta that kind of comes down right here and comes down right and it comes right through here that's what makes that little notch well that notch is a good land dog for a respiratory therapist because this is going to identify where your tip of your ET tube should be. And then if you look right below it, you should be able to verify, you know, your bifurcation. All right? All right. And so let's go. So we know the placements, right? So this is, this is the landmarks. Okay? So let's go. All right? We talked about normal. We talked, we went through the key markings. We went through the landmarks. So, ready to dive in? All right, let's go. So the first one that I bring up here is gonna be our COPD patient, right? So COPD is probably the most we encounter as respiratory therapists. So this is one that you should be able to identify and to see, all right? Well, the first thing that I would like to identify is the barrel chest. Do you see a barrel chest? I certainly do right and then you look and you have all this diffuse areas right here scattered throughout and all this and it's hyperinflation you see the hyperinflated lungs right and then what else do we see flattened or you know diaphragm right here that's an indication of copd also blunted angle so you look hyperinflation there's no shift, flattened diaphragm, COPD. Very good. Do you see that? Go down the mid. Just go down your markings, right? So go down midline. Is there any shift here that you guys see? I don't see a shift. Cross phrenic angles. There's one here. Eh, that one looks like it's blunted a little bit. Diaphragm. Definitely a flattened, not curved and dome shape that we're supposed to see. This is flattened. I see my heart. I see my notch, right? My knob, I see it right up here. Okay, so what am I looking at now? I'm looking at how 
inflated these lungs are, right? And you have some, looks like the vascular markings going through and they are not looking too good, right? So this is definitely COPD. All right, so we're gonna keep going here and the next one that we're looking at is, this one is, if you said pneumothorax, you got it right. And how do we know this is a pneumothorax? All right, so let's go down our thing. Trachea, mediastinum, go straight down. And I do see that this is getting pushed over. I see it really dark. So cross angle angles looking, they look solid. So I don't see any consolidation, right? I wouldn't think pleural effusion. I wouldn't think pneumonia. I wouldn't think anything. I'm either thinking about extra air, something like that going on just because of the claustrophenic angles, but then this diaphragm dome looking like, you know, and now I'm looking and I'm like, what is going on? The heart, the notch, I can't, but now I realize I don't see any vascular markings over here. It's dark. I don't see any. This is actually the lung, guys. The lung has collapsed. This is all air in the cavity, and this is the lung. This is a pneumothorax, and this would be left pneumothorax. All right, so what would happen on our shift? That's right, it's a wave. That's how you know it. You see how it's moved over? Even the heart's being pushed. It's all moving towards the right side. It's a wave. So you know, extra air, pushing away. You can definitely see pneumothorax. All right, so moving along, we have well, we're going to our pleural effusion. Our pleural effusion, this one, okay, how do we know this one? Trachea, go straight down, wait. What does the trachea do? Does it shift on pneumonia, pleural effusions? Do they shift? Yes, they, they shift to the effective side. Pneumothorax, they shift away. And pneumonia, pleural effusions, they are pleural effusion. They, what, shift toward right so on this one you see there's a shift right here if i go straight down and it's shifted to the right side okay claustrophenic angles all oh, severely blunted diaphragm can't call it out too good heart it looks massive we don't really know aortic nart we see it up here for the knob and now we're just looking going, wow, okay, there's definitely some white, right, which we looked up here, opaque, right, consolidations, all those things we can identify. We definitely know we have a pleural effusion or a pneumonia, right? We're looking at something as consolidations. And that's what we should be able to identify. That's what you're getting to, right? Identifying that, getting that there's fluid in the lungs, right? And then you know how to get from there that's your interpretation all right so moving down we can now see what is pleural fusion right I some of you guys a little confused on it sometimes so I want you to see this diagram there's a pleural space that goes encapsulates right it's the sac around your lungs in between the ribs and and your lungs and it's filled with fluid but when there's too much fluid and we'll talk about those reasons in a different video. But if there's too much fluid in there, the fluid fills up, and this is your lung. So now your lung is being encapsulated and enclosed by fluid in this sac, and it's not able to expand. And this is where we have a problem. So pleural space, see that pleural space, and then too much fluid. All this blue right here re represents the fluid in this patient diagram, and this would be the lung. And you can see where the issue would be. All right, so moving down, we are getting into ARDS. ARDS, and that is what? Acute Respiratory Distress Syndrome. And this is where you have major issues, oxygenation, ventilation, everything we talk about with ARDS. But you can see why. That's what we call a complete whiteout, or there ain't much going on with this patient. And we can see that there is a lot. I mean, you can't identify anything. We, we can agree with that, right? This looks really bad. Consolidation, all of the above. <laughs> ARDS right here. All right, 
So the next one we're going to look at is, and we'll go to the next one so you can see another example because I want to see, this is a trach patient. See they have a tracheostomy tube here. But look at the consolidation. You guys see that, right? And this is ARDS again. Acute respiratory distress syndrome, right? And we can see why we have an oxygenation issue. All right. And let's go through. And we are going to do that. Now I want to show you subcutaneous emphysema. Sub-Q, right? This is when the air gets trapped in the pocket, right? Not into the lungs, but in the, between the skin. And as you can see, there is air. Look at these black spots. This is the neck area, guys. And if you look here on the side, you also see air here. And there's like air, but this is not in the lungs. This is outside. This is in between the skin that you'll see here. And you'll see it'll, it'll feel like Rice Krispies when you touch it. It's all these things you talk about. And that's when there's a false track and air is being pushed in between the derma of the skin. And then you have these pockets of air. They get trapped in there. And that's what we call subcutaneous emphysema. All right. And in this image here, we're, we're now looking at the markings, right? Go through all the markings. But here, it's pretty obvious. We see this right away. It's cardiomegaly. Remember again, we're what, right? Does this look like it's one half? It looks like it's almost the full, right? Three quarters, it's definitely over, right? That's an enlarged heart, okay? And we already talked about that, what that means, cardiomegaly enlarged heart. All right, moving on, we will go to into intubation. So let's look at intubation. We talked about x-ray and its importance to identify, but when we put a tube in somebody, an ET tube or an endotracheal tube, we need to identify placement, right? Because certain things can happen, just like we see in this image. This is a right main stem intubation. So we look for the notch, right? What I tell you, when we look for intubation, we want to look for, first you want to identify the aortic knob if you can, and I would say that's probably right in here, right? But if we look, I can see the bifurcation here. So if we looked at the knob and go straight over, that should be where the tip of our ET tube is, right here. But if I look, ET tubes and any markings that are inside your body, they have this radiopaque line. And what that is, is to show up. It's purposely put on an ET tube or any type of catheter that's inserted invasive. There'll be this line or this thing on that device or that equipment. And we're talking about the ET tube in this instant. And on the ET tube, there's a strip or a stripe down the back. And that's a radiopaque line. This is the line that shows up on your X, on your x-ray. And that's the line that we see right here, all the way to the tip. And you see how far it goes down. Here's the knot. It's supposed to be ending right here because what is our marking for our ET tubes? If you said two to six or in that range up to seven, five, different uh, books have different things. But my general is about four centimeters above the bifurcation or the carina, which is the tip in between the, the center of the bifurcation. All right. So four CMs above that. So that puts you right about here. As you see, this one carries a little bit further than that. When you go further than that and you go into the right main strip, remember we're talking angles. So when you put that in there, it's going to generally lead to, because of the angle, into the right main stem if you go too far. All right. Well, in this instance, they went too far. They went in here. They're ventilating the right lung. You can see that. Identify, ooh, nice dome. All the stuff looks good. But then you go over here and you're, hmm, what's happening over here? Well. This is an easy one. Withdraw the tube, put it at four CMs, and you'll have both lungs looking the same. You'll be ventilating the left lung as well. All right, and you'll look just like we have on this picture right here. Correct ET tube placement, right? And we're looking at dome, this, we're not looking at anything. This is a representation. We're looking at ET tube. Can you identify the radiopaque line? 
It's right here. You see the line going up? Okay, can you identify the knob? Mm, maybe right here, maybe here, L a little bit high, right? But then I can actually see the bifurcation. I don't need it. You can see it, the gray hue, it splits right here. And then I will go into the right, the right and the left main stem bronchus. So if you look at this, you're gonna see that this, you know, if we had the measuring tool, we can measure it, and this should be properly placed about four cm's above that split here, which is called your carina. All right, you all see that? And that's your normal ET tube or endotracheal tube placements. So, as you can see, there are quite a bit of chest x-rays and radiographs that you may need to interpret. I put up some of the, you know, the most or the most common that you will be exposed to. And if you can dial these in, you'll be an excellent respiratory therapist and you'll also do very well on your TMCs and board exams because this is the type of stuff that they'll ask. They'll ask it in questions, they'll ask it in this, but if you stay with your markings, you go through your landmarks, you should be uh, able to identify what they're asking in the question. So thank you once again, and we look forward to seeing you in our next video. Stay tuned.